Hey. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. All right, yeah, so hi, I'm Brian. Hi, Brian. I'm part of the video team at LCBC, and this is new for me. Uh, I'm just gonna have a conversation and, and ask you to share your story with us and, and see how it goes. Sounds good. Growing up, I um, my parents were divorced very early on. That was just a, you know, a heavy situation for a kid who doesn't understand. We went to church when I was young because my mom and my stepdad were gonna get married. We went pretty much every Sunday until my parents got married and then we didn't go anymore. <laughs> so by the time I was 12, I was smoking cigarettes and, you know, cursing up a storm and, you know, just acting a fool with the older kids and my older brothers. And I'm a very much, I do what I want, what I want kind of person. And that developed into, you know, some just really bad habits, things I shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> I quit high school the day I turned 17. So my mom said, all right, so if you're not going to school, you can't live here anymore. Drinking, drugs, chased by the police on the back of a motorcycle. Uh, I guess I really was void of any kind of uh, repercussions for my actions. You know, I had my moments, like good moments on, good moments off. Um, had two kids um, along the way. I got I got married, and and uh, her their their father and I were um, selling drugs, fifty pounds of marijuana a week, and then ecstasy became a thing, and it, it becomes a lifestyle you really get caught up in. I had incidents where I've had to pull guns out on people to protect you know my family, and you've been living that life. So, like you yeah. said, like twelve. I mean, it sounds like even maybe a little earlier until I would say twelve to. 27 yeah I'm rethinking this a little bit you know now I have these these other humans that I've made to protect <laughs> so, mm -hmm. my ex-husband started taking steroids um, and he was doing a lot of drinking and a lot of drugs and things had gone awry in our relationship um, and we separated um, my youngest daughter is about a year and a half old and I took off for Texas and I bought a house in a place I'd never been we're yeah. just gonna go to Texas. <laughs> you know, my ex-husband's angry and I'm angry with him and so let's get some separation. That's what I did and I picked up the girls and we moved off to Texas and, and you know, I got down there and now I'm like, okay, great, I've got this separation but I only know this lifestyle. And I had this uh, boyfriend who, um, he was a, a pretty heavy drug user and, um, we got into a fight one day, he pushed me, and I snapped. I beat him up, and i that's the closest I've ever been in my life to like literally killing someone. He calls 911 and says that I'm beating him up. Mm. The, the police officer, one was talking to him, and another one came out to me, and he said, did, did you do this? I mean, I'm like this big. Mm. <laughs> And I looked him straight in the face and I said, yes, I did. He pushed me and that's what happened. And yes, I did that. And it's scary. And he put me in handcuffs and off to jail we went. So I'm like, what was the big change for you? Or where did life start to really change? I'm at Barnes and Noble and, and there's this book with this very interesting face on it. Save Me From Myself by Head Welsh. Turns out he's this guy from Corn. I pick up the book and it's been signed. That's the reason I picked it up. And of course, you know, he's addicted to meth. He's, and so now I'm compelled to kind of keep reading on. You know, drug addiction's been a, a thing in my life. And this guy is a train wreck. I'm a train wreck. <laughs> like, I get this guy, totally get him. And he basically said, I begged Jesus to come into my heart, like begged. Like, I need you. And that's what I felt too. I needed. Jesus died when he was 33 for me. I'm 33. Like, shouldn't I be doing something for this guy? Like, he died for me. Like, shouldn't I? Literally, Jesus saved this man. And because he saved him, this man's saving his daughter, you know, from a, a terrible life. I want to save my daughters from a terrible life. So I'm in my car and that's when I pray is in my car and I'm willing to put away 
and kill my old life for you. But I need, I need you. And literally beg, like Jesus, come into my heart and save me from myself. I am a horrible person. I am a terrible mother, but I know that you can change me. And he did. And now I'm here. That day I knew I had a father who loved me and I had Jesus who would change me, but I just had to let him. In 2016, Paul Atkinson was the York campus pastor and he came into Grindhouse Tattoos and invited us all to come to Easter service at LCBC. And Derek pops out the back and was like, hey, we don't work on Easter, we can come. Good. Right. This is my husband, Derek. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Derek. Paul invited us to come to LCBC, and I actually was surprised that he, like, jumped on it. But, I mean, I was like, okay, I'm on board. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. We ended up at church, and he really liked it. And I think he particularly liked Paul. And when we actually came to the church, um, everyone welcomed us. Most places we go, people obviously give us dirty looks and they don't see who we are from our hearts. And uh, we get to church, the band starts playing and the message like hit me. I know that I was struggling with my addiction. Um, and I just realized that um, Paul actually was a caring man and he was somebody that actually looked out for me. Um, I started volunteering at church right away. I did traffic and then I also did um, at the movies build week. And that is the week that I gave my life to God. Paul took us outside. Well, he took me outside to the curb in the parking lot. And we pretty much talked to God, prayed to him, and uh, gave my life to him. I, I am changed. I, I am a different person now. I'm still rough around the edges. I still have my personality. I'm still the same person but I just have this relationship. I have this life that is truly changed. And I literally was saved from being the lowest form of, of human that you can think of. I mean, when you think of scumbags, you think of people who are in jail, people who sell drugs, like that's who I was and that's not who I am anymore. And that's not due to my own doing because if that was the case, I would still be doing the same thing or I'd be dead. Right. I'm, I'm Derek McMaster. And I'm Kelly McMaster. And we're Lives Changed by Christ.